Uh, right now, she's almost in Columbia, South Carolina. Hopefully. And she's heading to Florida from there for Easter. Yeah. yeah. She left. Uh, we saw you. You were heading to the 101, and I was bringing her to the roller home. And she took off Wednesday. Then uh, some comments from Mildred, and we'll end 
up with an announcement of sorts at the end. So I'd like to introduce to you now the current chairman of the School of Business at Tri-State, Dr. Laura Coppins.
Well, now, how are your children? Uh, Kelly and Tracy and Jason? <laughs> how do you do this? <laughs> but that it would be typical of camp as well, and these kind people were like that when they were here uh, as faculty members, and it's wonderful to know that they're still like that today. I could tell you a number of things about champ and what he meant to me as a student uh, and as a faculty member, that would take an awful lot of time, which we don't want to do. Uh, I can tell you some of my fondest memories of champ probably today would be thrown out of the classroom as being politically incorrect. <laughs> but he was a lovely man. And what champ taught me the most in my life, I think, is a compassion for my fellow man. And I think that's why I'm here. It is an interesting twist on fate that I were, would not be here, and we would not be talking about, Mr. Nigro and myself, talking about trying to get the scholarship fund established so this can be a continuing, ongoing thing. Uh, we're not for champ, but it's an odd twist, because after I graduated from Tri-State, Uh, those of you that were here remember that Champ and Trenopal and I spent a fair amount of time together. And on a number of the times that we were going off to go ice fishing, Champ would just berate and belittle and chide me unmercifully because I was wasting my life in teaching. I ought to get out and go get a real job. <laughs> Had he not, I would not be able to help in this fashion because I sure couldn't have forced done as a teacher. <laughs> So thank you, Champ and Builders, for your kind advice. But it's been wonderful. And when I was teaching, and I taught for about eight or nine years, uh, I had a lot of wonderful teachers here at Tri-State that I tried to emulate or Im imitate. Mr. Sheffield and Iron Mike over here are a couple. Uh, what I got from Champ, again, was the compassion for some of the students and try to have a little bit more understanding for them as people. So I tried to find a balance there somehow. And I hope that I was successful. Uh, but I have great hopes, again, that those of you that remember Champ fondly will think about that and help John and I as we go forward to try to build the scholarship fund up to an amount where students such as the two young people today that are going to receive this this year uh, may do so in future years. Sheffield to say a few words on behalf uh, of a, another colleague on Champs College, just for a few minutes. Just for a few years, right. David told me not to speak too long. Wayne Chapman was a good friend. I came to Tri-State University as a young faculty in 1966, 32 years ago.
accepted that as fate. <laughs> this was our life, you know. But one thing we had in that building, and I wish we could capture, I'm saying this to the students because I know Wayne would say it too, I wish we could capture that same feeling of kind of here in this building. There was a camaraderie among faculty, students, students and students, which was very hard to achieve. We all seemed to cross the misery. <laughs> and so as a result, we had a fellowship. Wayne's office was within the bullpen, probably the one where we all congregated. The fact that the students are lucky. Because if you wanted to talk about something, the students didn't treat me right, the faculty member, the faculty member didn't treat the students right. You wanted to talk to Wayne. And we always had him here and he was willing to listen. We always had an opinion. He'd tell you what to do, too. <laughs> <laughs> In all honesty. You know, and sometimes the language is colorful. <laughs> but I love Wayne, and I think he felt warm affection for all of the students and most of the time that were behind that main chapter in the building. I got my doctorate a number of years ago now, but when I came back, the first to welcome me back to campus and congratulate me was Mildred and Wayne. The test Mildred's memory. Fishing, right, Mildred? You probably was fishing or playing some golf. If you had a problem, whether it be <coughs> classwork or just personal problem, Wayne was there to sit back and sit back in the lounge, that nice old lounge that they had, and take some time and uh, whatever time you wanted that afternoon was yours. He would take that time, and that was uh, probably the remembrance I have of Wayne. 
plus the begging for a grade. <laughs> because Wayne was that educator that the classes he taught, he taught. And you better learn his class. Because while he might have been fun in that afternoon class that you had in discussion, insurance was insurance. You better listen to him. And I can remember, you know, the, the grades that you had to get. Yeah, John, you should have got an A, but you know, you're not gonna get that. You know, we're gonna give you this because you'll try harder next time. And you can remember those professors that you had even I was talking to John earlier that uh, the professors you remember aren't the professors who were easy on you or your teachers in high school or wherever they may be. It's the professors that made you work a little harder. And Wayne was one of those. And so uh, Along with that, my perspective, uh, these were sent out, Dave, to people who, uh, students who might have had, uh, had had CHAMP, and they sent back regrets that they uh, could not make it, but they had some uh, comments to make. So I'll try to quickly go through these. Uh, there's no dates on these, but the gentleman by the name of Dave Ruper, no, I'll give you these later. Uh, truly a dedicated instructor, professor, and one that if a student could grade champ would get an A plus. He was one of a kind. Uh, Dave's from uh, Colorado. Phil Johnson. Phil was uh, lives in Iowa right now. I had Wayne Champion as a professor in many school of business classes. His personal touch and interest in you as an individual was exceptional. I sure admired and respected him the very best to his family. Please show this card to his family. Many thanks. Uh, Dan Marks from Lakeland, Florida. Champ was my mentor and probably the one reason most responsible for turning my education around into a successful experience. He was a very special type person and a fine educator. Sorry I can't be there. Ken Engler from Fort Wayne. Unfortunately, I will be out of town on business that day. I would have loved to be there. Champ was a special teacher. I remember and cherish his philosophy as much as his instructions. Those are a sampling of what was sent back. And I know when Dave Bellinger called and said that uh, Mr. Hale would like somebody to help him on this project, I was more than happy to uh, step up and help. And I know. Uh, going to get a good response from this because of Jim. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now, Bill Stockbrenner would like to have a perspective. Bill has just joined the Tri-State staff, actually, as a fundraising professional. So, he's going to serve double duty like I do as a graduate and also an uh, employee of the university. Hey, thank you. And my speech teacher is also here. I came here in 1974 as a very naive 17 year old. And I left in 1979 ready to conquer the world. Now, my math skills aren't great, so you can tell that's a little bit longer than four years. And uh, I remember Champ as a friend, probably more than a professor, as, as David mentioned earlier. But I was also, I'm not going to say I was a troublemaker, but I uh, had a tendency to, to poke fun and have good times like I do now. Well, I often wore a, a hat to class. Champ would often tell us, he'd give us one warning in class, and uh, that's all you needed was one warning. And I said, yes, sir. He would tell us, son, hats are made to be worn outside. They're not to be worn in my class. And he said that once to the class, and you never saw another, another hat in his class. And I'm sure that uh, if he was here today, he'd tell us that same thing today, because we see hats all the time. So <laughs> that, would, that would be a unique situation for everyone right now. But one spring day, and it was was funny, one of the speakers talked about that tug on the ear. In 1978, Champ called me, I was down at the bullpen, I didn't even know what's called the bullpen then. He called me down and goes, Bill, I need to see you. And I said, oh boy, what have I done now? <laughs> well, he called me to the office and he said, I've got something for you. I, I meant to give you this a long time ago, but I haven't got you alone and I want to do this between you and me. And I said, boy, what have I done wrong now? <laughs> I'm in a lot of 
of trouble. Well, I've got to read this part because I, I don't want to, uh, to confuse it. He says, I have a special group of boys. He called a lot of us boys. A special group of boys that I give this to. Boys that I think might be a little bit special. So I said, well, I don't think I'm going to get in trouble. I'm saying this to myself. So he gives me this note. And in this note, and unfortunately, I've lost that note numerous, numerous times that I've moved. But uh, I still have this. It's a silver dollar that he gave to me in 1978. And there's some other guys here that I think have the same silver dollar. And he said, I don't want you to ever spend it until you have to. And with that dollar, spend it, but calm it, because I'll always be there for you. And uh, in 1978, I was lucky enough to speak uh, to the senior class at our commencement. And in 78, Dan Quayle was the other speaker. And uh, he even commented to me afterwards about the part that I'm going to read is also on your program. And I paraphrase it a little bit, but uh, I think it's worthwhile to read. This circle of friendship I give you with edges rough and no end you see to encourage you in times of despair to strive and to think eternity. Wherever you are, whatever you do, we are never far apart. My wishes for your success, my friend, are sincerely from the heart. Like n a number of us, Champ taught us numerous things in college, but to me, Probably the biggest thing he taught me was to take responsibility for my actions. And I use that every day, every day. Uh, if it wasn't for Champ and the rest of the professors here, I'm not sure that I would have had the career that I had uh, at, at Synergy, Public Service Indiana in the southern part of the state, or hopefully have here at, uh, at Tri-State. But I honestly feel Champ was had a big part of that. And I'd like to thank Champ for today, and Mildred, I'd like to thank you for letting me be a part of it.
When our house burned in 1966, Wayne made sure that the fraternity was reimbursed for its losses and helped find a new house for the fraternity in a very short time. His advice and leadership during this time helped the chapter get back on its feet after an event that could have destroyed the fraternity. And due to his many accomplishments as a brother, he received the highest national award, which is the Delta Beta Xi Award in 1967. And we have a plaque in our house. If anybody wants to see it, you can. And it has his pin, or his uh, brother pin in it. And it has a bunch of stories that national build up about him. Yeah. <laughs> we know now. I just thought they were better students. Yeah. <laughs> they probably were. They bought insurance. <laughs> Anyone else? Very good. Very good. Glad you shared those thoughts. Okay. Let's move on then to the uh, what we are really came here to do today, and I'd ask Dr. Reynolds if he'd come forward and take care of the actual rededication. Wayne A. Champ Champion, Scuba Lounge, friendship and sincerity are two things that cannot be purchased. They are earned. I should have worn my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Champ, rededicated April 3, 1998.
your self habits that are conducive to quality performance. I am proud to be a part of the process of learning. A part of my page is your success. I want at this time I want to especially thank David Peel for his effort and contribution in revitalizing the Wayne Champion Memorial Scholarship. I know he has spent much time in bringing this day to fruition. Thank you, David. Many thanks also to David Ballinger and to John Nigro and to any others who have been instrumental in this rededication ceremony today. On behalf of myself and our daughter, Bonnie Buell, I cannot adequately express our gratitude for honoring Shane. I'm sure he's smiling down on us with this day. The Alpha Kappa Psi was an organization whose members were valued not only as students, but as friends by chance. For this reason, I have chosen to return some of the citations and awards which are placed over here on this table uh, that were given to him so that they can dis be displayed in the student lounge. I hope that they might be a reminder of the fellowship that he displayed throughout his years at High State University. I close with a little favorite verse of mine. Tis a human touch in this world that counts the touch of your hand and mine, which means far more to the fainting heart than shelter and, and bread and wine. For shelter is gone when the night is o'er, and bread lasts only a day. But the touch of the hand and the sound of the voice sing on in the soul always. Thank you.
funding level where it can be self-supporting. And long after I'm gone, and many of you are gone, we can still be helping and championing some students. And that's really why I did it. Uh, it's the one thing that I can give back. And I hope that we can encourage all of you folks that did know Champ, uh, or even if you didn't, you had the same sense of humanity that Champ had, will help this scholarship fund to grow so that it can be a continuing basis for support for young people in the future. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you can always depend on Champ to help you. Either the silver dollar, or the grade, or the help in the class, or money. Champ was there for money if you needed something. So it behooves us as graduates from here to be able to help further the education of other people. Okay, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Coppice to join us at this point. What we'd like to do is Further ado, I'd like to announce the recipients for next fall and have them come forward, please. Sherry Cleverly and Amy Eaton. I'd like to offer them their congratulations and uh, again just to follow up. This was done, most of our scholarships don't work quite this way. This is a special award and was done on the recommendation of the faculty members in the School of Business, and so they should feel pretty good about that. I just want to comment that Sherry is an accounting major and Amy is a management major um, who have done very well. They both work very hard in supporting their education.
Sure. Ian drinks at the cabin. Ed took many a golf ball. Uh, ball at the cabin. Okay, Doug, we'll take your check right now.